probably the highest level of anti-Semitism since the days of Hitler. Gog and Magog on the lips of a lot of people these days because of everything that's going on in Ukraine. Russia's invasion of Ukraine, threatening the world with nuclear arms, China's siding with Russia at the moment. Many people think from the book of Ezekiel, there are these powers, world powers known as Gog and Magog, and they think that Russia and China are those powers. We're beginning to see the coming together of this alliance. The truth is, we don't know who Gog and Magog is. The scriptures are not clear. The rabbis have no unanimous decision on what this means. But let me tell you something that many people don't know that is absolutely very clear, a little bit of a hidden mystery, and that is this, that in Hebrew, Gog and Magog is Gog u Magog. Maybe you want to say that with me, Gog u Magog. You can practice your, your Hebrew. As you know, Hebrew is alphanumeric. That means every letter has a number. There are no Roman numerals in Hebrew, so you write letters with numbers. And so every word has a value. Gog and Magog, Gog and Magog, adds up to, in Hebrew, the number 70. Well, that is extremely important. Why do these two nations add up to the number 70? What is the mystery that it's trying to tell us and it's this. In the very beginning, there was the Tower of Babel. All the world was united. And they came against God. They built the tower to heaven. And in Jewish thought, they built the tower because they wanted to dethrone God. And they built the tower high because they had, they had known about the flood. And they were concerned about another flood. So they figured, we'll build it so high, God won't be able to flood us out again. And we'll go up to the heavens and fight this war against him. It was the first universal rebellion against God. Why is that significant? Because Jewish tradition tells us that God, when he confused their languages, actually the word Babel means confusion, Babel, God confused their languages and he gave them 70 languages. And as a result of that, the Bible is very clear, the five books of Moses, that there are 70 nations of the world according to the worldview of the scriptures, of the Torah. And it connects to 70 descendants of Jacob going back in Egypt. And anyway, so the, biblically, the nations of the world are 70. Going back to the Tower of Babel where they united against God. Why is that significant? Because the end is going to be like the beginning. Gog and Magog equals 70 because it's all the nations of the world uniting together for an evil purpose to fight against God and to come against Israel to try and destroy God's promises of what he said he would do in the end of days with Jerusalem and the Jewish people and his promises that ultimately he is going to fulfill again. The end is going to be like the beginning. And it's, there's so much more there. But the interesting thing is that in Hebrew, the word sowed, mystery, or hidden, equals 70. Significant. Because again, these things have been hidden. Who Gog and Magog is, 70, is hidden unto the end. But of course, there is more. 70 is a numerical value of yayin, which is wine in Hebrew, which is, I think, significant because the prophets tell us and the book of Revelation tells us that when all these nations come against God, ultimately, when Yeshua, Jesus, returns, he's going to tread them like grapes in the wine press. So literally, the nations of the world are like grapes, okay? The 70, the numerical value of wine, but God is going to come back, Yeshua is going to come back, and he's going to crush these nations that come against him and ultimately establish his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Friends, this is important. We see this, signs of the times. There's an increase of anti-Semitism in the world. Probably the highest level of anti-Semitism since the days of Hitler. We see anti-Semitism on the rise throughout Europe. 
nationalism throughout the United States, throughout the Arab world, this should be no surprise to us as again, as it was in the beginning, so is it going to be in the end. We look at the signs of the times and we know that Yeshua is coming soon. But the important things to remember, Russia, China, whatever other nations might be involved, whatever nations of the world come together, it doesn't make a difference because ultimately God is in control. He's gonna have the victory. And that means in him, we have the victory already. So don't be discouraged. You're seated with him in heavenly places. The one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Therefore, you are an overcomer. So be encouraged and keep watching and looking and be ready for his return.